right hello everybody welcome to the channel today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual because today i'm going to be looking at photographic capabilities of a mobile phone this is the huawei p40 pro now i'm being honest with you I wouldn't normally do a video like this, but I'm making an exception today for a couple of reasons, a couple of valid reasons. Reason number one is that Huawei got in touch. They were very complimentary about my photography, my videos, and they asked if I'd like to try the camera on their phone. Now, normally it would be a no, right? I'm not really that interested. But I looked at the specs and I thought, what? 50 megapixel raw files, three, four, five cameras on board? How do they squeeze that into a phone is beyond me. Um, and I thought, oh, yeah, okay, it looks cool, but it's not, you know, it's not what my channel's about. This isn't a tech channel. However, over the past few weeks, I haven't been able to get out with my, you know, cameras and tripods. You know, I really miss going hiking and I really miss, you know, I'd do anything just to pack my tent and go up a mountain and sleep on top of the mountain and get that beautiful sunrise or go into the woods and do some landscape photography the proper way. But we can't do that. And that content will come in the future when we all get out of lockdown. But what I have been doing to satisfy my creative needs is I've been going out a heck of a lot with my mobile phone. Now, we are allowed out once a day to walk the dog or exercise or anything like that, and that's what I've been doing. Um, that's how, you know, it's very therapeutic. It's how I get out of the house. It's how I'm not going stir crazy as I go and walk the dog or I go for a bike ride. And I'll take my phone with me and I'll be looking for compositions and images, and especially when you get good light, you know, it's nice to have a phone and be able to capture that image. So the timing, of Huawei was perfect. And I thought, do you know what? I would love to look at your phone because I've been using the camera on my phone more than I ever have in the past. And it's disappointing. So let's see what this bad boy can do. So in this video, I'm only gonna be looking at the camera, the stills camera, the photographic capabilities of this phone. I'm not gonna be looking at video and I'm not gonna be looking at the phone itself because this isn't a tech channel. Now, Huawei makes some pretty bold claims. They say that the camera in this phone has the world's leading smartphone sensor. And I can see why they say that because this thing will deliver a 50 megapixel raw file. And that is quite impressive. But I just want to get one thing out there and answer one question very quickly that some people may be wondering. And that is, will this phone replace your DSLR or mirrorless camera? And the answer straight away is no. <laughs> no, it will not. And I didn't want, you know, for one second, for anybody to think that that's what I was saying on this channel. It's not the case, but that's not to say that the camera on this phone is bad. In fact, you are gonna be amazed at how not bad this camera really is. In fact, it's quite extraordinary. So on the back of the phone, you can see this. This is the UltraVision Leica camera system. And there are four cameras, um, not four lenses, four cameras, four sensors but only three of them actually take photographs. The fourth one is, is really clever. And I don't know why they don't implement this in uh, DSLRs, this technology, but the fourth camera, what it does is it fires out an infrared beam that hits the subject and bounces back to the camera. And then that tells the camera the distance between the lens and the subject so that it can focus, which means in low light situations, if you're trying to focus on an object that doesn't have much contrast because it's dark, it can focus, it can nail the focus because it doesn't rely on contrast, it's using that infrared beam. So that's pretty impressive, but it only works on subjects that are relatively close to the camera. The other three cameras, again, are pretty impressive and I've jotted down some specs here so that I don't, and we are, we are gonna look at the images. I've, like I say, I've massively tested it. Uh, so the camera on the left, is a 125 millimeter, this is full frame equivalent by the way, 125 millimeter uh, lens that produces a 12 megapixel image, not bad. The next camera is 23 millimeters, full frame equivalent, and that produces a 50 megapixel image, 50 megapixel raw file. And then the camera on the right, the far camera is an 18 millimeter, which is like the wide version. It is super wide, it's nice. 18 millimeter full frame equivalent, 40 megapixel sensor. So three very useful cameras. And apparently, <laughs> I'm so bad at this type of thing. Um, yeah, there's, a, there's also a selfie camera. Can't say I've used it, so let's give it a go. I'm not really, 
don't really take selfies, but it works. So we're now inside Lightroom and uh, before we dive deep into some of the pros and cons of the camera on the Huawei P40, I should say I've been shooting it in two different modes. Mode one is essentially fully auto. You turn on the camera, you point, you frame, you zoom, and if you want to change your meter reading, you can lock focus and then drag your finger to wherever you want the camera to meter from. So the second mode is the pro mode, and this allows you to control all of your exposure settings, you know, shutter speed, ISO, not aperture because that's fixed, but it also allows you to take advantage of the 50 megapixel sensor so you can shoot a raw file at 50 megapixels if you're using the medium uh, lens. So when you shoot in mode one, which is you know the, the fully auto mode, you don't actually get a 50, a 50 megapixel image. Only in the pro mode can you grab that 50 megapixel raw file. When you shoot in auto, what it does is it uses the 50 megapixel sensor and it takes an image and it combines four of those pixels into one bigger pixel which means a 50 megapixel sensor becomes a 12 megapixel sensor, but with bigger pixels. It's called pixel binning, and I'll be honest, don't fully understand it, but the end result is a much cleaner file, although it's not as high resolution, it's much cleaner, which means when you shoot in low light situations, you should get a much better quality file. And it's funny because this technology is so clever that in my mind, it makes the pro mode completely redundant. So there is no doubt that the images that come out of this phone are fantastic. Well, I really wanted to push it, so I went out in a lot of challenging low light situations. Again, usually just walking the dog or going for a run. And you can see the detail, the color, and the quality of the images. You know, it's, I mean, look at this photo, for example. Uh, all shot handheld. This one was taken way after sunset. And you can see we've got all of the detail and the color in the foreground whilst remaining or whilst maintaining all of the all of the highlight detail and capturing the color in that sky. I mean this is a phone handheld pretty much at night time. And look at it, it's absolutely superb. Um, and all of that is down to the technology in the phone, the AI or the processing or whatever magic it does in there, it does it very, very well because the JPEGs look absolutely fantastic. So it was the raw mode of this phone that got me really excited. A 50 megapixel raw file from a mobile device is pretty impressive. And this is one example here. So this is a handheld 50 megapixel raw file and there is a lot of information in this photo. However, I do feel that the image quality is limited by the lens as it struggles to resolve the detail of which that high megapixel sensor is capable of capturing, which leads me even more to believe that the benefits of the raw file isn't that fine control that you would expect from a raw file, but instead it's so that you can have a 50 megapixel file bin down to 12 megapixels, giving you bigger pixels, more light gathering capabilities, so the science and magic within the phone could do its thing and produce an exceptional JPEG. This is the, uh, the JPEG and it's just great, it looks clean. The colors look good, the contrast looks good. You know, for a phone shot, this is fantastic. So I believe that the AI is so good in this phone that there is no need to shoot raw because let's face it, okay? Let's be honest with ourselves. When we take pictures on phones, it's incredibly unlikely we wanna extract that raw file, put it onto our computer and spend hours editing it unless you capture an extraordinary moment in time. And then you've always got the option to shoot raw and get that full 50 megapixel file. But for 99.9% .9 of the shots on this phone, you, you just want it in, in normal mode and, and let the artificial intelligence do all of the work because it does a fantastic job. I'm still blown away by this. So let's take a look at the three cameras or three lenses on this phone because there is a bit of a difference between them. Uh, so the 18 millimeter full frame equivalent wide lens, that is great. Have that field of view on a phone and for it to produce the quality of images. <laughs> yeah, man, my horizons are not 
straight. Right, sorry, yeah, so for it to produce the quality, I mean, you can see here, we've got great contrast, great color, um, and you know, it's not a massive file, but it's certainly decent enough quality for most social media situations and most uses that you would put images from a phone to. So that's the 18 millimeter and the quality is superb. If we look at the, the 23 millimeter equivalent, which is the one that uses that 50 megapixel sensor. Yeah, I mean, it's for this situation here, this scene that you're looking at, uh, what I found interesting was the bench and the fact that it's all been taped off because we're in living in crazy times right now. But look at the quality. Uh, this is a very, very, very difficult situation for any camera to handle. We've got the rising sun, very bright sky, deep shadows down here. <laughs> it's absolutely nailed it. Like, look at it, look how good this file is. Um, and that is, you know, I've not done anything to that. Again, straight out of phone. And that is the, yeah, that's the sort of medium lens, the 23 mil equivalent lens. So when you switch to the uh, longer lens or the longer camera, the 125 millimeter equivalent camera, um, it's, yeah, the quality falls down a little bit. Actually in broad daylight and bright conditions, it's absolutely fine. It's more than acceptable, uh, but it does struggle in those low light situations. So you, you know, you are handheld, although it does have optical image stabilization. It's still, it's not bad. Like this image is okay. It's captured it quite well, but when you really start to push it, let's have a look here. Yeah. When you really start to push it, it struggles, but you know, that is a, a long focal length and in, in a tiny housing, you know, the lens is tiny. So physics is never gonna allow you to have that super crisp, sharp image quality. And let's not forget this is a mobile phone. The fact that it's got a fixed 125 mil lens in there with optical image stabilization is, uh, it's impressive. Um, but the image quality of that lens versus the other two, um, not as good. This phone also has a night mode and whilst it does a great job allowing you to effectively hand hold a 7 second exposure, I was surprised to see that shooting a night scene using the normal photo mode actually produces a much better final image. What I found night mode good for was those cityscape images where you have lots of bright lights and deep shadows. Now I don't have any cityscape scenes where I live, but this pub gives you a great example of when night mode really comes into its own. You can also find HDR mode, which I tested in a very, very challenging situation and no surprises, the phone handled it perfectly. So this is just a great example of the quality of this phone and it is i'm being like completely honest with you this is blown me away but i mean just the jpeg file the color the vibrance the detail the contrast having a little play in lightroom you know i've deleted some uh, distractions out of uh, out of the image in photoshop and just by having a little bit of a play and <laughs> just messing on with uh, a bit of a vignette Maybe just, ooh, just increase the vibrance a little bit. I don't need to do much at all. I probably could drop the highlights. I mean, that is, that is a great image from a phone, <laughs> from a phone. So uh, yeah, very cool. What's my conclusion? So my conclusion is very much dependent on the quality of the large print that is currently coming out of my printer right now. And that will tell me really how good this is. And let's not forget this is a mobile phone. So while that's printing, in summary, what I would say is this is never gonna replace a DSLR or a mirrorless, okay? It's just not gonna happen. But for those situations when you don't have your camera on you or you can't have your camera on you, this is really, <laughs> it just is good. It's such a fine substitute. And you know, maybe you're watching this and you're not even interested in having a camera uh, and taking photography that seriously. You just want something that takes good images. Well, this is up there. I can honestly say, hand on my heart, I would rather have the camera from this phone than carry a phone and a little point and shoot. Um, I think, sadly, the days of point and shoots are numbered, you know? This is outstanding. My print is ready, hang on. All right, there we have it. 
This is a 12 megapixel JPEG that I just played around with in Lightroom. That image there. Oh, let's have a look. It's good. It's not bad. It's good. The sky looks great. The waves look good. You can see a little bit of, you know, you can see a, a little bit of digitalization, I suppose that's what you call it, on the tree, on the log there, on the driftwood, but all in all, yeah, there you go. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. And that is my conclusion of the Huawei P40 Pro. Mind blowing. We live in such an age, don't we? Right, there you go. Thanks so much for watching. If you've never seen this channel before, usually I'm out doing landscape stuff with, uh, you know, this sort of thing. So um, yeah, subscribe and when lockdown's over, we'll get in the camper van and we'll go somewhere and have an adventure. But until then, stay safe. Thank you for watching and bye for now.